In this video, where we deal with yet more waves, we can talk about the speed of waves, and this time the speed in terms of the physical parameters of the medium in which the wave is travelling, be it the density or the tension or whatever it is. And also we can talk about the energy transported by waves. So to begin, we have a wave equation, and in this one-dimensional linear wave equation, we had the speed c over the wave. To actually find C, you need to do some physics. Now, I'm not going to do that physics for you right now, but I'm going to tell you what the speed of some different sorts of waves are. So for a thin wire or a string, you can imagine a guitar string or a slinky, we have some sort of transverse wave motion here. The displacement from equilibrium is given by Y as a function of X and T. The one-dimensional linear wave equation for Y is given by this equation here. And this term here, is sitting where c squared would normally be. In this case, c squared is given by the tension divided by the mass per unit length. And so the speed is a square root of this term here. For sound waves, we have pressure, p, as a function of x and t, following a one-dimensional linear wave equation. The wave motion in this case, as you can see, is longitudinal. c squared is given by this term here, and when we look at what those different things are, we have gamma as the ratio of heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume, which is 1.4. R is the gas constant, M is the molar mass, and T is the temperature. At room temperature 300 Kelvin, we find for air a speed of sound of about 350 meters per second, which is also what we observe. Another kind of wave is the electromagnetic wave. It's a bit more complicated. There are transverse magnetic and electric components. If we look at the one-dimensional linear wave equation for the electric field, E, as a function of x and t, we get this wave equation here. C squared is given by 1 divided by mu naught epsilon naught. And plugging these values in, we get the speed to be this, which is, in fact, the speed of light. The final kind of wave that I'll mention is a water wave. Now, that's pretty complicated. The motion of the particles in water I've shown in this animation on the bottom of the ocean, they're just going backwards and forwards because you can't go through the solid floor. And as you tend towards the surface, the motion of the particles becomes circular. But this collective motion gives rise to a traveling transverse wave on the surface of the ocean. The speed of this transverse wave is given by the square root of g divided by k, multiplied by the hyperbolic tan, that's tanch, of k times h. g is acceleration due to gravity, h is the depth of the water, and k is the wave vector. So that is, for a sinusoidal wave, that's 2 pi divided by lambda. So if we're dealing with a single frequency wave that has a particular wavelength and frequency, then we can write down the speed of the wave. But if we have some sort of mixture of two different waves with different wavelengths, then they'll travel at different speeds. And this is an example of dispersion. And water waves are strongly dispersive. This is in contrast to, say, light in a vacuum, which is not dispersive at all. Light can undergo dispersion if it travels into a medium like glass, where the speed changes as a function of wavelength. Sound waves uh, in air are very weakly dispersive. It's hard to measure, measure any sort of dispersion for sound in air. And transverse waves propagating along uh, a thin wire tend not to be dispersive. Although you, if the wire becomes stiff, then you can start to see dispersion. The energy transported by wave per second, i.e. the power. So it's proportional to the square of the amplitude. For example, on a string, the power transported is a half. This is the linear density, the square of the angular frequency, and a is the amplitude and c is the speed. So it's proportional to the square of this amplitude here. For sound, now we have power per meter squared, because imagine sound traveling in a great sheet, in sort of a three-dimensional space. This is the power delivered per meter squared of a sound wave. Uh, we have half again. This is now the density of the air or the water or whatever it is. Again, the angular frequency, the amplitude squared, and the speed of the sound wave. For light, the equation looks very similar again, except now the density is replaced with epsilon naught, E is the electric field, and C is the speed of light. And this is power per meter squared as well. So the energy being transported by these three different waves uh, has three different equations, naturally, that depend on different physical parameters. But some, there are some things here that they have in common. Each of them depends on the square of the amplitude of the wave, and each of them depends on the speed of the wave. The square of the amplitude is something that's very common in 
systems that rely on some sort of oscillation, so the, the energy embodied in a harmonic oscillator depends on the square of its amplitude as well. And indeed, this is where the, the re reliance on the square of the amplitude comes from in wave motion as well. The speed, well, the faster the wave, the faster it's moving and the faster it's transporting energy. So these two things, the square of the amplitude and the speed, the speed c are common through all these equations. The bits out the front though can vary depending on the kind of wave that you have.